Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to be uh, talking about becoming a stronger writer. Uh, my name is Matt Kiesner. I'm the training manager here at Appworth, and I definitely uh, do a lot of writing and, and do a lot of writing tutoring as well. Uh, and you'll see that uh, I had a hand on um, kind of uh, trying to standardize some of our curriculum here. So um, I thank you all for, uh, for joining on a uh, warm summer night. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. So, oh, I should launch that poll. Always should. So, so, fill a poll just to kind of see who's here. And then, uh, anyway, so feel free to have at that. <clears throat> and the, um, if you have any questions there, uh, there's a Q and A. So, uh, so feel free to uh, jump in there, and I'll answer as I can. All right. So uh, tonight we're going to talk about you know the the importance of writing and and making sure writing has purpose. We're talking about how to do some uh, some creative brainstorming and and get into organization. Uh, how how to deal with a um, uh, a <coughs> excuse me. Um, <coughs> They had to create a thesis and make sure that you know the that you think about what the um, how how they how your writing will uh, affect the reader. Uh, we'll talk a little about structure transitions and that kind of thing, uh, and and the importance of revision and when and and trying to grow as a writer, um, and then you know how to provide that, uh, beneficial feedback when uh, you are the uh, the person giving that information, uh, and then you know ways to grow as a writer. So. I'm seeing uh, the so we got uh, a good mix of actually quite a few students here so that's that's great I'm happy to see uh, you know young folks taking an interest in us uh, I'll say that immediately that the the slides are going to be a little bit uh, kind of more from the uh, the teacher parent perspective but I think everything can just be you know, can be applied um, you know directly to you know to yourself right or to your to others right so um, that's great okay so. The cast off with the the gonna give it like <laughs> the big story. So there's a um, you know possibly uh, apocryphal, which just means you know probably not true, uh, but kind of more of a you know a uh, uh, kind of a tall tale uh, or something a story a story to explain something versus being history. Is that um, you know previously. In, back in the Middle Ages and so on, reading was very much a uh, a skill that was that was specific, where that you know the, your job was to be a scribe, right? Uh, and it, when the Industrial Revolution, um, that's when we start seeing more formalized education because it makes sense to have a um, uh, a worker who is literate for the you know the the crass reason that you know if you're operating you know machinery with uh, that you know requires you know some some knowledge. It's just easier to put a sign on the machine saying, "Hey, don't stick your hand in the machine." Um, so we, we see that like the increase of literacy and that become norm uh, in the you know in the in the developed world. Um, but there's not really an intrinsic um, uh, benefit in that in that sort of structure to teaching someone how to write because that, that's not really a job skill uh, like like being able to read. And I think that this you know has produced a. Um, a difference in our in our education system where you know that reading is essential but writing is it's great if you can do it right um and so it, it is what it, the slide saying that um that, you know especially um you know in uh middle and high school there's you know there's less writing um uh, curriculum than than uh, there really should be uh and a lot of um a lot of you know, students report back to me that their teachers don't really kind of emphasize the quality of writing. Just sort of like, oh, did you, you know, did you include facts, right? Or uh, did you did you create length right? and those kind of things? Um, so uh, you know, the, the, it's definitely uh, a a point in in time where um, being able to write it, it like it is it is a it is a uh, an effective skill, right? Um, so. You know, be able to you know to communicate and then have you know that as a job skill right as we um as we work you know uh more on computers more remotely um certainly uh, i appreciated the during uh, uh COVID lockdown that you know i my skill set that i could write and communicate and so you know i was able to you know transition to a to an at-home existence without having you know uh, really any kind of hardship which was nice um so you know that Unfortunately, it, it takes a while for schools to catch up to this. This is just the nature of standardized um, institutional education, right? That it's hard for them to adapt these to changes. But I think it's important that, that recognize the um, 
that you know, writing is is a skill like for you know uh you know for the way our society is set up right now and in terms of um you know of jobs and in terms of you know um uh affecting people that you know this is this is it's still um still important uh and and still a you know, and if, if anything that importance has increased right um the the ability to publish yourself in any any way means you know that that good writing can get out there and, and can, can be heard um so <clears throat> to go to go through this let's we talk about the sort of the setup with um you know, you know writing does need purpose right uh, and so, you know, one thing about writing is if you, if you kind of limit it to what prose is, there's really only three things it can do. Um, it can you know, tell you a story. It can be, you know, it can be fiction, it can be memoir, biography, autobiography, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and so you're, you're, you're trying to, you know, tell the events of something. Uh, or you can just explain something. And this, you know, this is the analysis. It's instruction. It's, you know, the, uh, the um, piece of writing that is like, hey, you didn't know about this thing, and now you do, right? And, and you know, giving um, insight into the world. And then there's also, you know, offering opinion, right? This is argument, rhetoric, um, and you can compare and contrast it, or something where it, uh, you, know, you want someone to to feel the same way that you do and agree with you, right? And so that's really most writing can fit into one of those three categories, right? Uh, there isn't in really that many um, things. Yeah, and of course, I'm leaving out poetry and, and things that are more um, tonal, you know, but if for, for prose writing, I think we're, those are, our, those are our main categories. Um, and so, you know, anything that's worth writing is probably uh, doing some sort of brainstorm or pre-writing exercise is going to be um, um, beneficial on that. Um, and there's really no way, you know, right way to do this, but I think, you know, it's, it's worth trying to think about the, the variance of this. And, you know, some people are going to prefer one way or the other. Uh, I think that they, um some lend themselves better to certain kinds of writing versus something else so uh, so one of these is free writing and so free writing is just you get uh you go without uh worrying about organization without worrying about necessarily grammar just try to get the information out um you know some people will like this because it's just sort of like okay i can get the ideas out and then once they are on the page uh or the screen you know, be able to sort of manipulate them and sort of uh, uh, fine tune them on there. Uh, the only danger with free writing is that we have to make sure that 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 initial burst of creativity isn't necessarily your final draft, and that you recognize that you, you're going to have to apply um, some, you know, perhaps some grammatical tinkering, um, moving ideas around, or creating better structure, recognizing that, you know. The sense you wrote up at the top and then the sense you wrote at the bottom, maybe actually those, those ideas would, would be better served by being next to each other. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> did, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, had spicy dinner. So <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's making, uh, making it hard to talk, but I'll, uh, I'll hope I get out of my system. Um, yeah, just make sure that it's not your, they're not your foul draft. Uh, then there's the idea of using journalist questions, right? And so <clears throat> these are just the classics, you know, who, what, where, when, and how, right? <clears throat> and so uh, <clears throat> if you're, th this is way where you're trying to answer this idea. So these can be great for fiction. If you're trying to write um, <clears throat> a, a story, right, uh, that is something that's completely fictitious, certainly, you know, who are your characters? What are they doing? Where is it set? When did it happen? Uh, all those sort of things. And if you're getting something maybe where, uh, especially creative, where it's like maybe it's, it's got a uh, science fiction or fantasy element or something, you know, that, that, that is where um, you can't just take uh, uh, based on assumption. Like it, these kind of questions would be really beneficial with that. Um, it's also important like, for analysis essays of, you know, who did it, you know, what happened, where did it happen, when did it happen? And kind of thinking those, those are you, are you providing that information to, um, uh, to your reader? And then that doesn't have to be as literal as every you know, one sentence as you wear. This is, you know, this information can be, um, Integrated organically, right? As you as you explain um, uh, the, uh, the information, <clears throat> and then the other one is is I think more structurally, uh, we're if outlining. So outlining is that you're working about sentences, but you're trying to break down break down the um, uh, the pieces of it, where they you know you, they give a headings and then <clears throat> information uh, subheadings, and then you know typically the heading would become a paragraph, and then the subheadings would would be turned into their own uh, sentence or two, right? And this, you know, outlining could also be a great way to to um, uh, to take it for, um, you know, because you could also do multiple of these, these steps if you're if you're working with a um, a larger piece and have more time. 
that you know to go from the uh, free riding and then do it and then using that to build an outline um or to uh, go back to the uh, previous one and then like use those questions and then thinking about where those questions should be answered in the passage uh and there's also visual ways of doing this you know so some people prefer a visual approach and i think they're, they're, those are great as well so um yeah, we're gonna go over three common kinds here uh with t graphs venn diagrams bubble maps um a ways of kind of uh, establishing that so t graph uh, and there's one there on the right uh is great when you're doing a comparison right where you, they what you do is um you have a set of a column of, of the topic here we have mickey and donald um and then each row is a comparison of um element um where you can um uh you know see what's what's similar or what's different right and so if you're doing comparison contrast or juxtaposition i think you know this is a great way to kind of set that up um i think you know it can get a little unwieldy if you're doing if you're comparing seven things right but uh for a classic you know um uh two thing comparison that, that works well and then venn diagram is also that idea but it's looking where things that are are are, are both right so um the you know to get a little bit of the math right the um the venn diagram is the, the the thing that in the overlap is both right so cow chocolate is both a vampire and chocolate right um so that could be when you're trying to figure out um things that are you know um that are, are both or neither right um the, that kind of thinking can be really helpful with, with the venn diagram and then a bubble map which is sort of like an outline but and uh, outline meets sort of uh, free writing where you're, you're kind of you know taking uh, concepts and then you're linking them together uh, and allows you to kind of see the relationships and then it's, that could be really helpful early on as you try okay I'm interested in you know here's automobiles and then you know uh, different types and then uh, you know you could uh, start linking things together you know um, uh, and you start you know this is you know the um, you know, you know truck and, and bus or are, are you know kind of or work vehicles for, for the most part right uh, motorcycle and scooter or you know uh, uh, two wheeled and, and kind of inter build uh, those ideas. Um, so once you've kind of done that, um, that sort of brainstorm, I think it's great to get into an idea of, uh, of looking for um, uh, right, you know, making sure that you have purpose with your writing, because all writing really does need some sort of purpose. And, and that the purpose can be diverse, right? It's not like there's only one way to do this, but you know, think about what's the goal of your writing? Because I think all good writing should have um, an a, um, a intrinsic goal of just, uh, you know, you want the reader to to you want to affect the reader in some some sense, right? And that that could be, you know, a narrative. It could, you know, be like what you know, what should they take away from the story? What's the point of the story? Right? How should they feel? Right? Should they, um, you know, should they learn a lesson? Should they feel empathy? Should they feel relief? Should they feel sorrow? Should they be, should be scared? Should they, you know, uh, should they laugh? Right? What, you know, what is the what is the purpose of this? Um, and for analysis, you know, what should the reader learn? Like, what are the key ideas you want um, want your um, uh, want your reader to uh, to uh, come with? Right? Uh, what, what's you know the the information you want to make sure that they uh, that stick with them and what the information is the most important. And the argument, you know, like, you know, what idea do you want your reader to agree with? Because, you know, an argument you're always trying to uh, have the reader, convince the reader, right, that what you think is, is correct. Um, so keeping those ideas in there in that, that initial sort of um, uh, founding can really, you know, can help with, you know, editing and revising the, you know, making and make sure you stay on topic and don't, um, don't get sort of bogged down in details. So, I was working with a student earlier today, and uh, he, he he's good at getting some some words on the paper, but he gets like as we tell you story, he'll get he'll get he'll get caught in the um, uh, the small details, and then they re like you know go into um, into such detail that he kind of loses like what was the point of that of that exchange, right? So we're trying, when I'm working with him, I'm trying to get him to you know to see okay like you know, what's what's the goal of this paragraph, and like let's you know. Uh, make sure that that's our focus and we don't just like start, you know, describing things and kind of slowing time down in, in the narrative. Um, and now I do want to talk about like a classic, um, you know, it's, it's a, a, a useful, it's a three prong thesis. Um, and so uh, the, the, the three prong is kind of come like the idea of a trident. Um, and um, is that you like, you basically state your, uh, your idea and then um, 
offer like three supports for that, right? So uh, here uh, in the bottom, we have a, um, a actual, um, you know, a possible thesis statement, right? So individually, we can reduce microplastic pollution by purchasing reusable containers, supporting local agriculture, and making food at home. Right? So um, this is set up because it, it says, you know, what what we can do, right? And then immediately provides that evidence. Uh, and this is this is a great one for uh, when you're writing, especially under the gun, where if it's um, you know it's a midterm and you, and you have to produce something in class or something, you know, um, this is a uh, you know not the most creative essay thing, but you know. It's certainly um, better than a lot of other, um, you know, uh, options that the where uh, we're kind of you know slowly getting towards your thesis, right? Um, and so um, yeah, I see what I kind of coded here, right? So the, the, there's the three things, right? Um, in those, and we see the same coding is that they, that sets you up for a, a classic five paragraph um, uh, essay where you have your introduction, you establish it. Uh, you, you know, the, I mean, the most traditional way, so you like, you kind of introduce, like, you would, you know, for this one, it would be like, uh, microplastics are, are a big pollution problem. And you might even, you know, quote that, you know, the World Ocean Association um, says that there's, you know, 3 billion tons of, of microplastics in the ocean. Just made that up. I don't know if any of that is true. Uh, there's a problem. And then, like, but what can we do? Right. And so then you, you said, then you would end with the thesis of what, you know, steps you could make to help things out right um and then the the best thing to do with, with parallelism is you know uh to go back um you know so we like you start with the first one the second and the third and then that is your your parallel structure for the um uh, for the examples and okay the, so the the nice thing about three-prong thesis it sets you up to have a structure um and i think it does a lot of the labor um for you if, if you know this works obviously a three-prong thesis is not really going to work for uh, you know some narrative things right um, this is definitely more on the uh you know telling or um arguing uh, side of things okay so um we're going to transition into organization transitions um so I, I think you know paragraph organization is not an intuitive skill for most people um i think when we're you know when we're communicating a lot of other senses like we're, we're talking to people we're not thinking like, oh i have concluded an idea and this is a new i'm sorry a new idea in the same way we do this in, in writing um and I, i've definitely seen some you know pretty good um examples of writing that would you know benefit from you know just just even having those breaks right um so it's okay to struggle with um with, with you know with paragraph breaks but i think it's part of it is just to you know um to think about this so the the feedback i like to give um with um with, with a student of mine would be like when i see that okay this is clearly um a, a macro paragraph that needs to be sort of divided up is that uh, okay i'll tell my student so there, you know this paragraph should be divided up um where do you think that division should be so i, I rather than like oh it should be here or something uh, I like to I like to make my students think about that, and uh, so that, that's a great way to sort of uh, give some give some feedback, uh, and there and also a lot of bit of choice, right? And, and see, you know, I think most writers are going to be able to do uh, you know do that at the right uh, right spot. You know, I don't think it's a uh, too difficult of a, of a skill there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so when we're structuring our paragraphs, you know, uh, also think about transitions and. What I, I find also when I'm working with a lot of, uh, of students is that they, they make they assume that the reader sees the information the same way that they do. And, you know, maybe sometimes they do, but uh, I think they like being a little more overt about transitions and trying to um, connect between these is like uh, certainly strengthens your your um, uh, uh, your overall. Um, uh, Overall structure and your overall art, you know, like the presentation, right? Um, so, and then um, you know, this, this is the idea is talk about is that you know that um, it, that it's some of the some of the best vocabulary we, we can have. And then the idea on the bottom here is that like you have these two statements, like statement one and statement two, because we're using but here, the second statement is more important, like uh, undoubtedly. Uh, right, you, you can't say something and, you know, I like for example, 
I studied last night, I studied for uh, today's test, but I was looking over the wrong chapter, right? So the, the second statement makes it more important. And, uh, you know, being able to kind of like uh, use uh, transitions and conjunctions that way to kind of make sure that you lead uh, a writer, uh, lead the reader through. Um, I, I had a, I was working with a seventh grader not too long ago. And he's like, he's like, I don't, I don't ever really use but or so or anything. And I'm like, and I was thinking, like, hmm, like, you know, it, you know, I kind of, okay, this is opportunity to sort of push this, you know, like, how can we connect these ideas um, so that they're not just standalone statements, but they're like, you're, there's a logical thread throughout um, all of these. So I'm not saying that like studying a ton of vocabulary makes you a better writer. I don't think that that's necessarily true. And uh, I kind of cringe a little bit with uh, the, like, I'm going to use um, the, uh, you know, the, the, the built-in thesaurus to sort of amplify my writing, because uh, typically that just sort of feels like um, just odd, fancy words in senses that don't really need them. Um, so, yeah, I think it's better, like, you know, to, to kind of organically build that, the vocabulary and, and use words that are precise, but also that you feel comfortable with. Um, that being said, I think, you know, there's a, like building a vocabulary of transitions is there is a lot of validity in there because they, these are all words that will, um, uh, contribute to, to, um, the rational, you know, like are the rational flow of ideas, uh, regardless of your actual topic, right. Uh, where, you know, you can learn like some, some words that are, that are great in a certain kind of style. All of these words have application for nearly any kind of writing. Um, and so uh, this is something where I think in, in terms of um, uh, like building a, um, uh, a better um, uh, skill set can, um, can really, you know, be, be helpful in this. Um, so obviously, you know, we're not going to go over all these words <laughs> tonight. <laughs> so like, and then I spent 15 minutes, you know, <laughs> splitting 50 words um, there. So I, and if you're like, oh, I need to, I want to grab this list for you know for myself or for you know uh, my student or something um like you know we'll we'll, we'll send you a uh a pdf of the slides so, so don't worry like that'll we'll, we'll shoot that over to you tomorrow all right so let's get into the idea of revision um and so you know writing you know it's a, it, it's it can be a pain it's definitely uh, an experience that um is um it's something that can you know take a take a lot of time um, but the, um, you know, it's in with writing, being able to go back and revise, I think is, is a really important step in there. And I know it's, you know, it's the, uh, it's difficult, but it's the same thing like with other skill acquisitions, whether it's learning how to play guitar, um, or, uh, you know, how to, to, uh, uh you know, how to hit a baseball or something like the more you do it, like the easier it gets and going back and like you know, trying something, you know, something again is going to, going to have that uh, in there. So, um, you know, very few people have like their first draft is their final draft. Um, that's just not how most writers work. And some, some people have, um, you know, they kind of uh, write as they, they revise as they write. And I, I would say that personally, I do a lot of that, you know, uh, I am, I am very much a writer on uh, in uh, as a on a work, work processing program. I'm, I'm always kind of like readjusting things a lot as I write, um, and so like that's my that's my process. Um, but knowing what the, is um, you know that the idea of revision and being and then you know, but I would still go back to it before anything you know would be published, right, and make sure that that it's looking better. And so I, I decided to include a, 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 a silly uh, cartoon here. Um, and obviously this is about drawing, um, but I think that it, um, it nicely sums up a lot of uh, feelings. Um, uh, people, I think that a lot of creators have, and then how, especially have people who are not in that creative uh, field, you know, like, oh, like that's just a miracle or something. <laughs> uh, it's like, no, it's practice, right? And I think that's true with writing as well, right? Um, for, you know, there is, um, uh, uh, very few people that are like truly innate talents. And I think writing is especially, a, honestly, kind of a weird innate talent to have, right? Because no one, no one is born literate. Uh, you know, this is all skills that we learn, right? Uh, they might be precocious, but it, you know, the, the idea of it being practiced. So uh, 
hopefully you enjoyed my uh, uh, my silly web comic there. I didn't make it. I'm not Sarah Anderson, but uh, also I'm the kind of person that, that I'm not going to you know take someone's art and not credit them. So um, she does really good stuff. Uh, all right, so back to writing. Um, you know, I think one thing with, with revision, and, and as we get back into how to give feedback. Um, you know, don't try to do everything at once. Um, you know, it, it can be important to like look back at a piece of, of, of writing and, and try to focus on one specific thing, right? Um, is, do you have a clear relevant thesis, right? Is, is your thesis, you know, if anyone really under, will understand what your intentions were? Um, are, are you giving specific details or are you using vague pronouns? Uh, you're saying it was great. Okay, what was that? I mean, you know, how, and, or a word choice about like, you know, Try not to rely too much on to be verbs or something. Instead, of use other um, other verbs that, that are more descriptive of action. Uh, so the organization transitions like do, do, do the paragraphs make sense, um, you know, as is, or, or would it make sense to maybe split into an additional paragraph? Uh, did you use transitions correctly? Like does is, does every paragraph have a, a a word or phrase that helps connect it to the preceding paragraph? Um, dealing with sense variety, uh, you know, making sure that uh, that you don't get stuck in a rut of you know very uh, similar sentences, right? Unless that's, that's the, the goal, which you know there there's a style reason to, to kind of have repetition, but it has to be pretty intentional. It can't just be like something that you know that like just oh I always use you know uh, a simple <laughs> uh, subject verb object um, kind of um, uh, kind of pattern there, right? And then getting you know, into word precision, right? Of are you using the exact word for something, um, or you know the there's one um, uh, writing advice in that you should never have to use an adjective or an adverb because there's always a word that like there's always the uh, you know this should be a word that that encompasses that. I don't think that's true, but you know um, getting where you know instead of just uh, adding um, adding additional um, adverbs to, to affect verbs uh, think about like um, you know could use a verb that already has that sort of so. and then <laughs> let's talk about um, uh, feedback so this is definitely written from someone giving feedback on there um, but the you know uh, receiving writing feedback this it can be stressful um, uh, on there so um, it's important to you know that you know, it should always be done with good intentions. I think uh, one of the things that um, that I really um, dislike is, you know, uh, a sort of a um, a negative attitude towards someone writing. You know, if someone is writing that and giving it to you, and this big, oh no, this is wrong, and you like, you know, you should have used me instead of I, and just like just uh, hurling all this, like, you know. Um, all these errors i mean it, it's demoralizing and like it doesn't you know it doesn't give a, a a plan to to um uh to improve it's just it's just uh it that's to me is an exercise in um in trying to um uh be uh i don't know the that's what i would say uh, uh trying to show your dominance in in the in this regard um uh, rather than um uh anything uh, uh, like that. So, um, you know, and, and feedback should always be, you know, um, constructive, right? And I think, you know, some good feedback is like, okay, like, so, um, you know, how could you revise this, right? Like making sure that you're giving uh, agency to the, uh, to their concerns. Um, yeah, so, and then uh, the thing about feedback and something that I always try to do is that if you get, like, if you're dealing with writing that is, you know, it needs a lot of improvement like to, to, to be to be blunt um it's better to focus on a few things rather than like address all things because like they it, it's going to be impossible for anyone to kind of um uh like process all that so like hey let's let's give let's talk about two things that would make this better right uh approaching it incrementally right versus uh trying here's everything you did wrong um uh, on there and so i think a great template for this and this is something that like um in the, uh, the uh, writing curriculum i'm working on uh you know that is you know we have a higher order skill and so what i mean by that is like things about main idea and thesis um supporting evidence and specific details organization like big picture stuff that, that um is like you know the point of writing 
I think it's good to, to try to uh, give some feedback in, in that um, uh, in that discipline. Um, and so it you know, gives them, hey, like, you know, let's like look at like, let's look at your thesis statement or uh, let's ask like, is, did you explain this deep, like, you know, this paragraph where you talk about, you know, this uh, example, like maybe we can flesh that out more, right? And there's also what we call lower order skill. And this is all like the, you know, grammar punctuation, making sure that you have complete sentences, make sure that you have diction, you know, using the correct words. And I think it's, you know, it's better to give like, hey, like, you know, let's, let's talk about one of uh, one of each, right, versus trying to talk about all things. Or, or I think even worse is just, yeah, just lower order skills, right? Um, I hope you, you misused, you know, uh, used the wrong there and, uh, you know, this, uh, this verb doesn't, is the wrong tense, you, you know, and, and never really getting to the big picture stuff as well. Uh, so the, um, you know, we talk about how, how do we become a better writer? I think, you know, that it's incremental, right? Just like a lot of other skills that are, um, are gained. And there's, you know, I, you know, it's totally okay. I, I was not a great writer in, in high school or anything. And I don't know if I'm a great writer now, but I, I'm, I think I'm competent, right? Um, and it really is something that I didn't feel like I learned those skills until, you know, uh, uh, end up in college in a, um, in a writing intensive um, uh, uh, field and then end up in, you know, a, in a, a grad program and stuff that was all, you know, write a 90 page uh, master's thesis and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's gradual, right, uh, on there. I certainly wouldn't have been able to do my master's thesis when I was 13, right? So um, it, it's something that we should recognize there. Uh, and so, you know, part of it, and this is kind of getting into how we talk about, um, uh, you know, we, we do executive function coaching here as well, um, and do some study skill stuff. But like, you know, having a growth mindset, like, like, under recognize, hey, I can do better at this, right? So, um, and the, if you if you look at your writing, not as like, oh, I'm a bad writer, uh, or um, like that, but look at, hey, I I am going, I can I can improve my writing, I can get better at this, and you really can, you know, um, I I think it's just like any other kind of skill, right? Uh, that you can, you can uh, that doing more frequently and receiving feedback and implementing that feedback is going to, is going to make things better. Uh, so, you know, like, but then you have to approach it with that, with that, uh, with that mindset. Um, and so, you know, these, like this idea of fixed mindset versus growth mindset. So a fixed mindset is when you're personally like, I, I'm bad at this. And um, I, um, the, uh, I can't, you know, I can't do this. Uh, and so uh, that's the, that's going to re reinforce native self belief, and it's, it's going to also become like it's going to be comfortable to not be good at it, right? Uh, where a growth mindset is like, you know, hey, what can I learn from this? How can I improve, right? Um, you know, what you know, what did I not do uh, as well? The you know, last time that I can fix now, uh, and and this is you know in, in important like to uh, I think in not just in writing, but in, in all kinds of academic and all kinds of professional um, uh, um, applications, and also like in you know, if you want to, you know, do other stuff, like you want to learn how to, you know, uh, sew your own, like, clothes or, uh, you know, play the drums or, uh, you know, whatever, they, like, or you get good at a video game, right? You know, there's, there's all kinds of different ways you can do this um, that are, that, but it's all like, if you go back to it, it's like making those choices, right? And, and having uh, the right kind of mindset. Uh, and so I want to talk about like how to how to kind of get better as a writer and, and give some options in there, right? Um, so, you know, I think a template that I like is the sort of idea of, of read, write, and revise. Um, I wish they were all ours, but I, <laughs> I know better than to uh, um, you know uh, have a bad spelling mistake in a in a writing in writing a, a, a presentation. But let's let's talk about what I mean for this. Um, so. If we go back to kind of like early education, um, when like you're first learning how to read, you're 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 reading to learn how to read. You're reading how to learn how to say uh, letters and then learn how to say words. And you're building uh, you know uh, new uh, phonics and you're learning that how a, a ch sound is different than an sh sound and, and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, but around like second or third grade, it starts switching over where you're no longer reading to just learn how to, to read something. You're now reading to learn information. And, I, and that's a big developmental change, right? Uh, and so uh, through the elementary school and middle school, that's kind of what it is. It's like you're learning how to, um, uh, you, like you're, you're reading to learn new things, right? Whether it be science or history or whatever, right? Um, 
but as we grow as writers, I think, you know, you can, at a certain point, you can learn to, you can read in order to learn how to write better. And so this is about like looking at the choices the, the author makes and trying to, to determine, you know, um, one day and think like, hey, what's a book that I enjoy? Or, or like, do you have a favorite author? Because if you have a favorite author, they, they should have a style, right? And then trying to, you know, look, okay, I, I like this author. Uh, why do I like this author? What, you know, and actually reading to analyze. And, and I think, oh, this is, this is a really effective writing. Like this makes me feel something or this makes me want to uh, agree with them, right? And, and there was uh, kind of, you know, this, this is really vivid. I feel like when I'm reading it, I, I feel like it's happening, you know, right now. Um, and that's a great way to kind of like to, to, you know, to read something, but also to like to make it about your writing because you know, you're, you're picking up skills, right? And you're, you're determining what you like and you probably at some point you're probably determining what you don't like, right? Um, and so you can kind of like, you know, but you have to, it's thinking this is a kind of a really more really, like a what they call metacognition, right? So it's you're thinking about how, how uh, you know, how this was made versus just, you know, enjoying it as like a story or information. Um, I think as, as part of that is when, like when you're real little uh, or like you're in grade school, you don't really think about like someone wrote your textbook, right? And they like they had a reason for writing this. Uh, and then, you, you know, as you get older, you're thinking like, oh, wow, like, you know, uh, a, a good example is history. How do you tell history, right? And uh, what the uh, what do you emphasize um and how do you view certain events and, and so uh and if you were to go into history you'd recognize that there's not really a uniform uh answer to that and you can see how other things affect it right so get, get into full college here and so you know like here's some sort of questions to kind of think about like you know when you're like you know why did the author write this you know what were they trying to you? like what how are they using their words um you know, what are these what are the key details that um that i need to know uh and how are they making sure that i, I remember those key details right and so kind of um analyzing the way that they, they write um and you know what it was potentially going to have next like you know this could be you know foreshadowing right in terms of like are they um are they uh dropping some information they'll be uh they'll be useful later um and so a um Another great way to, you know, getting into actual writing thing is, is, is to try like a diversity of prompts. Um, and so, you know, there's there's all kinds of ways to get you writing. Uh, and you may find ones you really enjoy, you might find ones that you think are terrible. Um, so that's, um, yeah, it's good to kind of just, you know, get exposed to those sort of things. Um, so I've got some examples like, you know, um, try writing a, 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 um, a story by an image. So, you know, got a silly image here. Um, and, uh, you know, like what's going on, right? Uh, this is going to go on an adventure, right? Um, you know, what's the, you know, like, obviously, I don't know the, the exact context of this, you know, kind of pick this image at random. Uh, but, um, you know, try to figure out, you know, what, um, you know, use this to, to be creative, right? And to use this as a creative writing story. So, you know, and the great thing about this, Joe, I mean, we've got the internet, so you can just, um, you can grab all kinds of images, right? And, you know, just uh, type in a word, go to Google image select and just see what, what shows up. And then, you know, pick one that looks interesting, right? So you know, this is a you know, pretty much infinite source of, you know, of being able to, um, to, to tell a story. Uh, the other thing that could be like, you know, try to answer a question, right? So here, you know, with prompts like, uh, what's the experience that you've had that you'd like to do again, right? And so here, that would be about your ability to recount a memoir, but also contextualize it and why it was important. What, like, what about that experience um, did you did you learn and like, or something you would do differently, right? Uh, and so, you know, making sure to answer that part of it, right? Or if it's for a famous person from history that you'd like to meet, you know, so I would like to meet so-and-so because they did this and they, them doing this influenced me, right? And so uh, we can have uh, that kind of, um, uh, you know, these are also good ways to kind of in more of an analysis way um, to, uh, to build some on it. And then, you know, other one is like you can take, you know, they here have some common maxims and, um, you know, did, um, uh, you know, do you agree or disagree, right? Like, just like, is this, is this something that you, you feel uh, is true to you or like, or, or there's something in the mistake, right? So. You got some, you know, there's, there's lots of these, right? Um, and so, you know, they got to try to think, can you, uh, can you express your opinion and maybe, you know, convince the reader that your opinion is also correct, right? Um, and, and kind of build those uh, in there. Uh, also, like, 
in a good school, it, it was like instructional writing. Like you try to try to explain how to do something, right? So it costs one is like you know um, is do you know, create a recipe, right? You know how like something that you know how to cook, right? And like uh, work on being precise enough that so that someone who has no familiarity with your recipe would be able to be able to recreate it, right? Thinking about the order of things, the actions of things on uh, there, or to do another kind of skill, right? Um, you know, and that that can be all kinds of different things, whether it's you know uh, how to do latest TikTok dance or uh, how to you know properly uh, tune your guitar or, or change the oil on your car, all kinds of things, right? Uh, and those those are um, good skills to like because it's working on um, on precision of language, right? They're like saying something clearly. Uh, so uh, those are good. And then you know, I gave you uh, if you have an awesome recipe, right? And, you know, put it online that uh, you know uh, you know share it with the world. Um, and then, you know, don't forget about revision, right? So uh, revision can, can really happen at, at different points. I mean, it could be something that could be done the, later the same day, uh, or it could be done, uh, you know, like days, weeks, months, years later, right? Uh, and I think, you know, in the latter one, it's like, you know, one thing that if you wanted to really grow is like, you know, think about what, what you knew then versus what you know now, and like, are there new skills you could apply, right? Um, is that, I mean, I'll say that like, you know, to, to, to get a little bit of digression, I like to mess around with some music and like, I, and I like to record stuff and just kind of, you know, and, and I do it for fun. Uh, but I, you know, I'm always trying to learn new things because like, that's, you know, I'm not, I'm not that old. So, uh, you know, like, you know, maybe I like to learn, you know, uh, uh, a weird new chord or a scale or, or like, or get it, you know, oh, this, uh, you know, like this technique. And then, you know, I sense it's fun to actually go back and I, I could, I, incorporate that into something that I composed, you know, earlier, right? So um, I think revision is, is a good, a good way to, you know, to make sure that you have that growth mindset and you don't just say like, I'm done with that and, you know, and that I've never, you know, never do that again. Um, think about how you can uh, make things better. So um, one thing that we've been able to do here um, that's nice is, um, uh, so last year uh, I, I was able to get a little bit of time to make a writing guide. So uh, we do have a, um, an opera with a curriculum for this kind of stuff. So um, it is like it, it, it walks you through five different uh, you know, classic writing styles, um, and you know teaches you some uh, you know strategies and stuff that you know, things we've some things we talked about tonight, but obviously a little more in depth and actual like uh, exercises and stuff. Um, and these lessons, you know, uh, focus on like big ideas and then like uh, grammar and stuff. And it's not it's integrated, so it's not just like fifty pages of, of <laughs> of grammar uh, so uh and you know lots of writing prompts and it's like and it's if you're familiar with our sdac stuff it's in the same kind of goofy uh conversational style uh it's definitely not a, a grammar book or anything it's about you know like um uh you know giving you uh topics and exercises to improve on this. so um we we do uh we are able to you know um we, we have it with a um to staff with tutors, you know, and have this be like the curriculum that goes with it. So uh, if you think that, um, you know, that having a one-on-one -on -one instruction would make sense, um, we can certainly uh, you know, set you up with a program advisor and, and chat about this. Uh, what leads me to my next slide is that uh, it, we're at the tail end of our sales. So we, uh, we don't do a lot of sales, but we do in June and December and uh, June's almost, uh, almost over there. So, um, and the, the, the nice thing is that we are including academics, so anything that would be in a writing tutoring uh, would be, you know, would, would fall into that. For um, we have a, we have a sale going on with that as well. So, um, all right, that's all my slides. So uh, I don't see any questions on there, uh, unless someone wants to uh, pop on there. But uh, I do appreciate everyone hanging out on a, on a summer, uh, and uh, you know, and listen to me uh, uh, chat about writing. So, well. I'm not seeing anything on there. Hopefully, uh, uh, I'm not gonna. Uh, oh, I got one, one chat there. Oh, just thank you. Great. Um, so uh, yeah, no, I thank y'all for hanging out. I wouldn't. I'm, I would not be the kind of person who like. Hopefully, someone's not sitting there going, "Oh, I don't know if I'm if I am composing this correctly." He's gonna be mean because that's definitely not <laughs> not how I am. So um, yeah, uh, the um, uh, yeah, Laura, I just saw your, your question. Um, yeah, um, we're gonna send out the recording and and a PDF of the slides tomorrow. So uh, you'll be able to get that um, on there. So yeah, um, absolutely. Um, so, all right. Um, oh, um, so also
all sounds good. Um, um, I will catch y'all later. And thank you for hanging out tonight.